Hello, my name is Nell and I have things to say about disability, chronic illness and mental health. I live with all of these things and in my videos on my channel, I talk about them. Some people watching them will be very, very familiar with these struggles and they'll hear a lot of familiar heartbreaks in what I say. Other people watching will have no idea what I'm talking about and they might have their eyes opened. If that sounds like something that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Come back every Wednesday when I upload new videos. Let me know what you think of my videos in the comments section and if you know of somebody else who would benefit from watching my videos, whether they're familiar with these things or not, I would really love it if you would um, share these videos with them. Now today I want to talk about my experiences with getting COVID one month down the line. Yeah, I got it. Well, it got me, I guess. The world has been dealing with COVID for two and a half years and I have been dreading COVID for two and a half years and it finally found its way to me. Now, the way that it happened was that I thought that I had a little bit of a cold. I didn't think that it was COVID because I'd been so careful, but I, I felt a little foggy on a Monday. Had a bit more of a cough than usual on a Tuesday. I usually have a cough because I have asthma and acid reflux. Then on Wednesday, I thought, I'll just test, just to set my mind at ease that it, that it isn't COVID. Because I was sure it couldn't be, it wouldn't be. And then the two lines popped up on that test. So I cried first. I think I swore second. And thirdly, I had to call my parents. Uh, because they also had colds and I had to tell them that they most likely had COVID as well. And then the worker who was there with me had to call her organization and, uh, tell them, Hey, somebody has COVID. What do we do? And she was told to finish up a shift and then just leave. Had to call my other organization and they said, well, their policy was to not provide services for 10 days after a positive COVID test. I thought, okay. Fortunately, I have my mum and my, my um, partner was staying, so, you know, I had people to cover my care. Had to call my cleaner and say, don't come for a week or two because I have COVID. Had to call my doctor's office and say, hey, I have COVID, what do I do? They were able to book me in to have a phone consult with my doctor because I really needed the antivirals. Now, the antivirals are not available for everybody. There are circum cer certain circumstances that have to apply for you to be eligible for the antivirals. I am absolutely eligible for the antivirals because I am high risk, I am immunocompromised. So getting a script for the antivirals was very simple. All I had to say was that I had an indisputably positive COVID test. Actually getting the bottle of antivirals was a completely different ordeal because I called the chemist and they said, yes, yes, we have your script. The problem is we don't have any antivirals here. Because it turns out that even though the antivirals only cost me $6.80, they're on the PBS, the actual bottle of antivirals cost over $1,000. And my little chemist in my little town cannot afford to have $1,000 worth of medication just sitting there. So, I don't know how much they usually have sitting there, but they must have already sold their last bottle of antivirals and they didn't have any. So they had to contact a local nursing home and get a bottle of antivirals from them, which made me feel quite nervous that I'd taken antivirals from some old person who might need it more. However, I was able to get a bottle of antivirals and I was able to do the five day course. And I, I do believe that that's what made all the difference for me and probably kept me out of hospital. COVID hit me pretty hard, but not as hard as I, as I feared. Though I do believe that that was down to the medication. I was incredibly fatigued. I wasn't bed bound, which I'm very glad about, but I was very fatigued. I was very slow. I had incredible brain fog. I coughed a lot. I coughed a lot. My throat, my lungs were exhausted. I coughed up a lot of phlegm, blowing my nose constantly. Fortunately, I didn't lose any sense of taste or smell. Um, although I did struggle with having an appetite. I, I lost my appetite pretty badly. 
After seven days, I did test negative. However, I still did have a lot of symptoms rolling around, but it meant that after seven days, I could get a lot of my care back. One thing I noticed, however, was that even two and a half years in, the communication with a lot of my organizations was still incredibly messy. So one of my organizations, it was pretty clear, I called them up and they said, okay, our policy is that if we get a positive test with an in-home um, client, the policy is we don't come for 10 days. So that's a seven day isolation period plus three days to make sure, absolutely sure that the COVID is clear. The other organization, I thought, well, I'm positive for COVID, so surely they're not going to send anybody. And so they had told the worker who was there on that morning, okay, go home and don't come back. Then two days later, my mother said, my Friday worker arrived at the house. No gear, no, no full body protective gear. And she hadn't even been told that our entire family had COVID. No one had told her. Now, fortunately, my mother saw her at the gate and was able to yell at her through the, through the window of the home to say, don't come in. We all have COVID. If she had come to my door, like she usually does, she would have walked up the ramp, unlocked the door, come into the, to the house. She wasn't even told. And then later on, I got a call from one of their organization and said, well, our policy is that we still send in workers if you want us to, because we see ourselves in a, as an essential service. And I said, well, that I was never given that option. Nobody called me. My worker called your organization. And all I heard was that she was leaving and not coming back. The communication was incredibly poor. So even though these organizations have had, you know, a good two years to smooth this over and to get into some kind of streamlined fashion, there is still a whole lot of dropping the ball going on, putting both me and their workers at risk. Now, it's, you know, a month on from COVID for me. How am I feeling? Um, I'm still feeling not great. I, I'm definitely experiencing the effects of long COVID. Um, my fatigue is still very up and down and it frustrates me because I've spent years getting a handle on my fatigue, getting to know my fatigue. I have chronic fatigue syndrome. I've had chronic fatigue syndrome since I was a teenager and I have spent a lot of years getting to know it intimately so that I could not so much control it, but predict it as much as I can. And now I don't know it anymore. I don't know how to predict it because COVID turned it all upside down. The, the amount of rest I used to have doesn't work anymore. The times that I used to go to bed and get up don't work anymore. My body doesn't work in the same way. It already worked pretty poorly. And now I don't, I don't know it anymore. My, my body is even more of a stranger to me than it used to be. I'm experiencing a lot of brain fog. And I've always had brain fog with, with chronic fatigue syndrome, with fibromyalgia, with Lyme disease. They all come with pretty impressive brain fog. And so for me, that's often come with struggles with concentrating. I, I will read a book and, and the words will start to fuzz and, and fudge together and I, and I can't concentrate or I'll just run out of steam. You know, I'll be watching a movie or a documentary and soon I'll realize I haven't, I haven't taken notice of what's happening. I'll be speaking to somebody and I'll, I'll just zone out. That's sort of my brain fog, not being able to zero in on what's going on. But since COVID, my brain fog has been different. It's been, I've been unable to find the words for things. I think, I think the word for it is aphasia. It'd be very funny if that wasn't the word and I can't even find the word, but I've had to find words. I was trying to think of the word for cutlery and, and all I could think of was, was, Poke, food poke, food, food spikes, food spikes. Trying to think of the word for sock. Just foot, just foot, foot sheath, foot, foot cover, foot. I couldn't think of it. It, it, it was like, it's like having the brain of somebody with dementia. I'm getting right and left mixed up, which I don't do. That's been frightening. And I hope it clears up. 
because I have enough fog in my brain to deal with without all this extra nonsense. Maybe in six months' time I will do another update and let you know if anything has changed. For now, I feel happy that I'm, I've made it through. Getting COVID was a bit of a nightmare of mine and now I've lived through it, so, you know, I'm not defeated. And I had my fourth shot on Friday, so I'm, I'm all dosed up. I hope that I'm okay in the long run. I hope that I'm okay. That's all for this one. If you have chronic illness and you've also had COVID, I would be really, really interested in hearing how you've been going. If you've had long COVID, if you've had different experiences, if your symptoms have changed or if certain symptoms that you got to know very well have now turned upside down. I'd be very interested to hear about it. All right. That's all from me. Uh, see you in the next one. Bless.